lots of different ways to make a sound. But what is sound? For example, how do you hear the sound of a drum? A sound wave is like the wave you can make on a slinky spring. You put energy into it by pushing one end. This compresses the spring. The compression travels along, carrying the energy with it. Each coil is pushed forward and then springs back to its starting point. What carries the wave when you hear a sound? The air in the room is made up of tiny particles, although in real life they're far too small to see. When a drum skin is struck, it bends outwards and compresses the air in front of it. It's the compression that moves through the air, leaving the air particles back where they started. In real life, the drum vibrates dozens of times every second, so a sound wave is made up of lots of compressions. But how do you hear them? You might think ears are just the fleshy things on the side of your head, but there's more to them than that. The fleshy part is called the pinna. Its job is to funnel the sound waves into the ear. The next thing the sound waves hit is the ear drum, which vibrates just like an ordinary drum. Then the vibration continues through three tiny bones called the ossicles. The cochlea is in the inner ear. It's coiled up like a snail shell. The ossicles pass on the wave to a liquid inside the cochlea. The movement of the liquid is picked up by cells, shaped like tiny hairs. They send a signal to the brain along a nerve. The ear converts sound waves into electrical signals, which the brain can recognise. If you don't believe that air vibrates, take a look at this. Sound waves can travel through solid things like wood as well. The particles in a solid are packed together far more tightly than air particles. What difference do you think this makes to the sounds you hear? Listening with a stethoscope can hurt. Does sound travel faster in the ground or through the air? And is the speed of sound ever as fast as the speed of light? To find out, you need to make a sound that can travel a long distance. Five tons of plastic explosive should do the trick. How would you detect sound waves in the ground? Samantha's going to watch for the explosion, but she's wearing headphones so she can't hear it. Fung is going to listen for it, 
so he's wearing a blindfold. And Elizabeth's going to detect sound waves in the ground. Ready? Ready. Okay. So, who's going to be the first, second and third to detect the explosion? waiting to see the light, hear the sound, or feel the sound. Samantha was first because the light got to them before the sound. Elizabeth was next when she felt the sound coming through the ground. And Fung was last when he heard the sound of the explosion coming through the air. The speed of sound in the air is 350 metres per second. At 5,000 metres per second, sound travels much faster through the ground. But light is much faster than any sound at 300 million metres per second. Sounds can be low pitched or high pitched. A high pitched sound is a high frequency sound. That means there are more compressions every second. But how do you hear the difference between sounds of different pitch? A microphone is like an ear. Inside, there's a diaphragm connected to electric wires. Like the eardrum, it vibrates when sound waves strike it. One, two. This creates an electric current four, in the wires, which five, you can look at on a computer six, screen. Seven, eight, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A trumpet has a higher pitch, so it makes a different picture on the computer screen. Ears work in a similar way. When a low frequency sound enters the ear, it's detected at the very centre of the cochlea. And the brain recognises a low frequency sound. When a high frequency sound comes in, it gets detected in a different place, nearer the entrance of the cochlea. This makes a different electrical signal and the brain recognises a high frequency sound. You can make a musical instrument out of just about anything. If you can make something vibrate at the right frequency, you can get a musical note. Batterphone works by changing the length of the tubes. A shorter tube gives a higher pitch. How are the 
slightly changing the pitch of the other instruments. frequency can depend on the size or length of whatever's vibrating. What else can the frequency depend on? A piece of wire can make a musical note, but how are they making it loud enough to hear? Yeah, nearly. How good is human hearing at different frequencies? This is a signal generator. It can make a whole range of frequencies. And they can change the volume as well. The speaker is vibrating 50 times every second, so the frequency of this sound is 50 hertz. Angela and Sam put their hands up as soon as they can hear the sound and Kieran takes a note of the volume for each of them. Caroline increases the frequency and they start again. Here are the results. The frequency goes along the bottom. The volume required to hear the sound goes up the side. Angela's hearing is about the same at most frequencies. The volume had to go up to about two before she could hear it. Like most people, her hearing isn't quite so good at high frequencies, so the volume had to go up a little bit higher. Human hearing is limited. Above about 16,000 Hz and below 20 Hz, Angela can't hear anything, no matter how loud the sound. Sam's results were about the same as Angela's. Angela has a job where there's a lot of loud noise, so how will it affect her hearing? Sam's putting on headphones. He's the control in this experiment. 
Angela is otherwise known as DJ Angel. I don't usually wear ear protection when I'm DJing because um, I like to hear the music um, fully. I like to hear what the crowd hears. Um, usually when I've finished a gig, my hearing's a little bit muffled and it takes a while for it to just back to normal again. I suppose I really should wear ear protection when I'm working to protect my ears, but it would make life that little bit more difficult. After the gig, they do the same experiment again. What do you think is going to happen? Sam's hearing is about the same as before, but the volume has to be turned up before Angela can hear it. At high frequencies, she has real difficulty hearing the sound. Here are Angela's results from before. Afterwards, the volume had to be turned up much higher, especially at high frequencies. It happened inside her ears. Remember, high frequency sounds are detected near the entrance of the cochlea. So those cells are more likely to be damaged by loud sounds and to stop working. A very loud high frequency sound can damage the cells for good. Loud music shouldn't damage your hearing permanently, but listening to it every day could cause Angela problems. What precautions should she take while she's working? 